All right, Gary, what are we playing this week? Uh, well, Cole, uh, as you know, I am a hardcore Nietzschean. Oh, and, of course. Uh, you know, and one of the, the first rules of Nietzsche Club is when you stare into that void, that bad boy, he stares back. Yes. But Jake. the first rule of that rule, sub rule, like lowercase a, is you have to stare into the void. Mm. So, so there, I stare into the it, void a lot. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I had to, had to diagram, diagram that sentence. Right. Right. Der, der, der Vils are mocked. Yes. Yes. And indeed, uh, yeah. Eris Frecken de Ubermensch, <laughs> as, as said by the master. Um, yeah. So I suck. And I like to look into the void a lot uh, okay. and be seen reading this stuff. Um, I'm going to, uh, and I figure the void, like I give so much to the void. Okay. I look into it. I spend a lot of time staring at it. What uh, if we reach in and 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 uh, see what uh, what comes out? Yeah. What if the void I, gives back? Yeah, I, I thought we rode the elevator down for a very long time. I didn't know you had your own void. Yeah, I've got a, I got a void. Yeah. Um, uh, we bought a void. It's <laughs> it um. It came with the uh, the apartment. Okay. It's one of the reasons my rent is so cheap. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because it's, uh, because it's howling, yawning maw adjacent. It, okay. It's always it's a snoring maw. Like roars fell into it, and the roars that came out. I don't know, man. <laughs> it, it, it was almost exactly the same, but it, but his black and white spots were inverted. Yeah, I had I had a good roar. I had a good Janet. Now I got a bad Janet, uh, but in the world of roars. Okay. Um. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, reach your. I don't want to do it though. You reach your arm in there. Okay. All right. Well. Let me just roll out this sleeve here, and then oh, oh, I got something. Oh, it feels. Oh, it feels like a hand. Oh, what's? Wait, Gary, grab, grab on, grab on. Help! I, I, brace me. Okay, pull this out. Two, three. Uh. <laughs> wait, wait a Ugh. minute. That stuff it's tastes god awful. <laughs> it's, huh. it's it's our good friend Sir. Slash, you've been slurping void, Sir. <laughs> Where do you think I find half the games I suggest? <laughs> I just yeah. dive into this bad boy once a week. Oh, man. Well, it's finally, finally something directly from the, the Sergis hand. What do, what do you got for us this time? Uh, I actually saw a dude in there today. Some guy named Dennis handed me a DS card. God, will you, Cole, let me, let me try will, and get will the, you fucking talk to your level well, co-host and tell him to, like, <laughs> get this shit? He, he's the person I'm I know who would be least clean. likely to be in the... Ooh, licking it, huh? Yeah, slurp. <laughs> the, uh, oh, it oh, still tastes bad. I don't know why I did that. Uh, it's yeah. different, uh, different Dennis. Okay. This is uh, De- Dennis D is on the back here. Property of Dennis D. Please destroy. Let's, um, let's oh, lick. Oh, God, I licked the wrong one. Let me lick the uh, other uh, side. Here, let me get some, too. Don't don't bogart it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, the, we're wow. like those lizards that surrounded that melon. <laughs> on the YouTube video, make Yoshi noises while we, uh, while you lick this filth. I, know, uh, I can put in some Yoshi noises, but it'd be much better if you made them, Gary. I okay. know. Okay. <laughs> there. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. You got to read this. It says, uh, from the, oh, it doesn't say toot human. It says from the makers of toot human. Mm-hmm. Uh, Axeman Destiny. Shit. Huh. This is, shit. This is, this is the heart, sound of my heart breaking. spot the exact instant that happened it happens it's 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 a uh, yeah it's exactly when it's it's earlier than you think um <laughs> i am uh, i'm gary butterfield i'm cole ross and i'm fletcher hello hello aka sir we'll, we'll go back and forth on that yeah, uh, yeah it is, happens so uh, has a brand identity yeah um brand and uh and this this game uh this is our first uh patreon abject suffering guest episode no. after after yeah, after john. <laughs> after john <laughs> <Just to> say, <laughs> what? the uh our first i i is our first one after john's yeah aka <laughs> the second inaugural mm-hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the first it's the first one where where we are not under some kind of conceit of uh uh being truckers while we play yeah that that that, that was a real like okay guys let's pretend to be x-men during this one though <laughs> 
Snicked. Let's all splice some juggernaut jeans in. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a dreadful euphemism, man. Like, <laughs> let's splice let's some like, jugs. Let's splice some jeans. Let's splice <sighs> some jug jeans. Oh, we got jeans slammed again. Oh, uh, we keep getting jeans slammed. Yeah. It's not jean slammed. <laughs> um, the, uh, this is uh, so Sarah got picked this game um, through uh, through generous support through Patreon. Um, and, and I feel a little bit bad cause you had another game, but then we were talking about this and you're like, I'm, I'm switching my pick. And I was like, man, I got to play was probably <laughs> much easier to deal with than what I had. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's just like, you know, my, this, this, this will be a, a rip roaring good time. Also, my heart literally broke. So it, <laughs> it was, uh, it was very sad that how bad this was because I really like, I, I love the max man. Yeah, I mean, you, like me, probably were hoping for a secret redemption. Like, oh, at the yeah. very least, this might just be like a serviceable, like, oh. X-Men Legends kind of thing, right? That's what I wanted. Oh, no, I, I warned you off before we even touched this. This was <laughs> not going to be <laughs> serviceable. This doesn't I end got the way the you think version. it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I didn't get to play. There's a bunch of different versions. Well, it, I was expecting, sir, because you, you have a reputation for, for playing bad games, and I don't feel like I'm telling tales out of school. So no, that's kind of not. That's pretty much my brand. You weren't kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's your thing. Have you played the PS2 Fantastic Four uh, X-Men Legends knockoff? No, I need to find it because I've been doing I've been preparing for a project on licensed games, good and ill. Mm. And so a lot of that PS2 Wii era is incredibly hard to track just because there was such a glut. Yeah, there's there's tons of stuff there. Like, I, I don't I if I hadn't looked it up earlier today, I would think that I had dreamed it like the, the fantastic <laughs> four X-Men legends knockoff, but like it's based yeah, on the movies. It's all the character, you know, it's movie continuity. I'm Pre actually Rise going to write Surfer. this down and find a copy later. On <laughs> um, I, w- I wanted that or better. Like imagine an X-Men <laughs> legends where like you can't change characters and you're stuck with the movie versions of the fantastic four. And I was like, I, I would, I would like that. I would accept that. Please give me that. Right. Um, I mean, yes, that's please. X-Men legends PC. They had mods for that. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. You're gonna be the Joker in like half of them for some reason. It was like Freedom Force. God, no kidding. Um, yeah, the, the um, but like that's what I wanted. And instead, like instead we get this, which is like out of the things we've done for the show that failed. This is such like a I can't like such a good premise. Like I it feels like I can't lose premise because like the the first X Men Legends game, like you start as a new recruit, so you have your point of view character to learn all this X Men shit. Like that's smart. Mm-hmm. In this one. It, the way that I remember first reading about this was like making your own X-Men. And I was like, holy shit. Like, do I get to design a mutant and have them join the X-Men? Because this is like what I thought about before going to bed from like roughly when I was 12 years old to when I was 37 <laughs> to, to present day. Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> the you know, which is great. <laughs> so good. Like I just, I really, really wanted that. And then, uh, I played this at the, uh, I think the last packs that I went to, Oh uh, wow. And I, and they, they just, it was a this little booth and it was like, I was like, cool, like X-Men, you know, and sat down and played it for a little while. And like the, the handler, like the, the promo person who was there was like trying to explain to me all the powers. And I just, like couldn't, I was like, these three people I get to choose from suck. And these powers suck. And I'm not, I'm not designing, you know, making my own power or anything. Like I was expecting something like the mutants and masterminds tabletop game or something like that. Mm. And it's, it's not. Hell DC universe online has a better power creation system and it, gives you the same you know three branch choice mm-hmm. it also does better things with the hero villain system did we mention this game has a morality system oh <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> because, so because every mutant has a choice you know in in, in universe right like mm-hmm. in, in the world of x-men you know it is a it's, it is a complicated system you know determining how mutant kind fits in so it makes sense if you can roll your own x-men you would be able to decide you know, do you actually side with the X-Men or do you side with the Brotherhood, right? Like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, just pr- pr- present both of these choices and let me consider the outcomes, consider what you're asking me to do and, like, mull over the philosophy. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not really that. And regardless of which, you just, you know, you just kill a lot of church guys. <laughs> like, like a lot of religious zealots. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, you're, my, you just fight uh, mobs of purifiers over and over, and then you're going to beat up Wolverine or Gambit or Sabretooth, and it's always a good guy, bad guy, good guy, bad guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's it's like the Bioshock Infinite of, of I was going to say of bad games, but like, <laughs> bada bing! Um, yeah, it, it's, the, the morality system sucks. The power is thing, like, not to, I just, uh, stay on that for just a second before we move on. Like, my jaw dropped when one of the powers was energy projection. <laughs> 
<laughs> so fucking bland and oh, stupid. Oh, so and then I was like, oh, the mean, Shadow mean, Force? Pew Pew Blast cool. Blast? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can do Blast like every X-Man. And then like it was like Shadow Manipulation. That sounds cool. And then when I played as like the Shadow Manipulator or whatever, uh, you still just do like little short charges and have little little blades. Like you fight the same as you fight as any of the guys, really. <laughs> it's just the color of your ability. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I assume density mani- manipulation also follows that same that same like, kind of density manipulation you, is such a cool idea for a power <laughs> you get a different ultimate and a couple of later game things but you don't use them much because you can pretty much just punch out most of the mobs yeah yeah and just wait in and just like attack and like they do one of the things that i'll say that's like nice about this game is that like usually when you're fighting those big like they're all too samey the big arena fights but usually like an x-man or, or somebody's there fighting along with you and it feels kind of cool uh-huh you know like you're fighting and then like Iceman flies by and freezes some guys next to you and then does does cool stuff but i had the, re- the realization part way through that i was like why am i not doing that <laughs> yep. like, like oh nightcrawler's teleporting around doing all kinds of cool shit like Th- that's exactly, previous games let me do that that's exactly the moment that broke my heart okay the, yeah. the the time when i knew this was not going to be a good experience was in the opening when they said oh and after all of those natural disasters happened that yeah. like the, 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 that's the way they say it. after all of those natural disasters cool guys cool specificity but no when i was when i was playing when i was fighting alongside nightcrawler and he was bamfing around doing a lot of cool stuff and then i'm just blap tappa 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 yeah and then so i'm i'm just gonna throw this out there nightcrawler is the best partner you get in the entire game because he teleports okay because mm. most of the time the ai is going to get caught in level geometry uh, as a trap like is. as the as the enemy and the ally uh path to each other like they just can't do it no like they will literally get stuck in a wall <laughs> and start trying to fight from there be fair if you've read your x-men you know cyclops does that a lot <laughs> Like Kitty Pride comes up and phases him into a wall. <laughs> this isn't funny. <laughs> just, uh, just like I'm not laughing. Uh, <laughs> there, there are just later fights in the game where you'll have three or four AI X Men or Brotherhood with you, and always they will f- run for the first polygon that traps them <laughs> and just start swinging from there. Yeah, like a reverse Katamari. Like just yeah. But be, roll me up. <laughs> and we and we don't usually talk about like a lack of polish, right? But like that's that's un unfucking sustainable. Well, it it's super yeah. unsustainable. But then the worst part about this is like usually with a game that's good that has that kind of thing, there's high highs and low lows. Like you could be like, well, the AI is super janky, but it actually has a really compelling like power system. Right, right. And and this doesn't like the high high. There's no high highs to this really. Like you didn't i played it for about two hours and like looking at a long play i was about halfway through yeah um and like <laughs> there's no real game facts gold for this the uh, if you do a print screen on the fact it is four pages long yeah it's it's, it's shorter than this fucking article we're going to talk yeah, about this here game is and, 10 hours tops uh, uh, except yeah. the ds version right yeah if, if you're if you're doing everything like it's it's very very short it's very very slight um the i was just expecting something to kind of grab onto even the writing, because this is written by like Mike Carey, who is a legit comics writer. Like mm-hmm. Mike Carey isn't a bad writer. Like and, and he's, even he's, like he's the, good. the scenario for this isn't terrible. Like okay, we're post we're post savior. Like there's an apartheid state kind of thing set up in San Francisco. What happens after a huge act of terrorism? Okay, well, Me- Mega Mayor shows up. Mega Mayor turns into a robot and like <laughs> and fights everybody. So I, I I only played a half hour. I played up to okay. the up to the first Nightcrawler fight, and then so when you're when you're doing those arena fights, like t- ten enemies left. Okay, ten. And then when you literally counts down, telling you you can't leave this room until you've killed X Men. Oh well, (laughs) yeah, that's what the X Men stands for. Solve for X. But is is that a cool philosophical question? No, no. no, Solve for Um, X. Why? It's why. (laughs) Yeah. Why do I have to solve for X? Yeah. Uh, This is a whole who's on first. It's just like Dennis Didak. We should get him in here. Let's let's bring him in. Do not invoke Dennis Didak. I I can't wait for the forty-five minute long YouTube response video to this episode of this podcast. Like Uh, we're we're all going to be. Baiting him. That's I'm, how this yeah. goes. <laughs> I, I am so thankful that we are not big enough to warrant that guy. But who knows? Who knows how petty but this man is? Bob wasn't so, when he first went after him. Uh, <laughs> it, it, the, the, the amount of pettiness is pretty pretty petty. Yeah. 
what uh, the hell is Dennis doing? One of his guys got arrested for child molestation and his company imploded. <laughs> yeah. I mean, D- Dennis is currently in the pr- in the process of saying, hey, you know that uh, Eternal Darkness successor that we've not been able to fund? What if we made that a multimedia thing with movie and television as well? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's uh, that's... I'm just imagining Dennis Dyant's quantum break now, and it hurts me. Ugh. Yeah, that's 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 really intense. He doesn't um, like this is a weird company though. Like when you look at the look at Silicon Knights, because like the the narrative is always like they were awesome and they really fucked up. And I think that like the narrative is much closer that like they had a couple of weird fluke hits, but were probably always like you know those were the flukes, right? And this is the baseline the thing... based on this guy's mind. The thing that is in common with all their good games, Nintendo was breathing over their shoulder. Right. Yeah. When you remove that, they are shit. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they and it's like quite literally. So like there's a Kotaku, like what went wrong article on this. And they talk about uh, publisher problems being their main thing. You know, th- those are their, that's their issue is like this, these relations with, with publishers and being bad about kind of sharing information and, and, and putting that down, you know, and, and, and stuff. Yeah. So like it's literally just not having the right people breathe down their neck. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> they are not uh, they're not blameless in that, though, because I haven't read this article, but I read on the Wikipedia page. They're talking about like, oh, after Disney acquired Marvel, uh, which shouldn't have had any bearing on the X-Men anyway, because X- uh, because of that whole fucked up situation, uh, yeah. they decided to cut the budget of the project without telling anybody involved with X-Men Destiny that they had less budget. Because they yeah. didn't want to hurt morale. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's you know super fucked up. And then you like you have this like leadership thing. So like, this article, Ed McMillan on on Kotaku, what went wrong with Silicon Knights X Men Destiny, uh, is one of the most like poorly written articles I've seen on a uh, a it, professional gaming website. Andrew McMillan, you said you said the oh. Isaac guy. Oh okay. <laughs> well, I, I'll get to him. Um, <laughs> why are you talking about like, like release the last patch so I can have Switch booster pack? Um. But it, it's six six thousand five hundred words to say like a very very scant amount of of details uh, on this. Like the details are interesting, but it just kind of repeats itself over and over. The details are amazing though. Like like they would do these like they would have their playtesters playing a build of this in their like little theater setup, and it would barely run, and it was like super janky, and the playtester like couldn't make progress. And Dennis Idak would get real fixated. He's like, "Why is that van gray? No one would buy a gray van. Make it red." You know, that like there should be more red lights in this. Like it's supposed to be dark and scary. <laughs> you know, he's he's like a he's a he's a baby. He seems like a baby, like a baby jock with money. You know, well, I'm money. One jock. of those bosses yeah, go- from the article that always feels like they have to do something in order to justify their being there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, the, no. The allowance solution is not we need to fix the engine this is running on because it's stolen. And that's why a court said this game has to be destroyed. <laughs> but. <laughs> That's a real thing, by the way, just yeah, for yeah. anyone who doesn't know. This game is supposed to be destroyed via court order. I was very surprised that as that I was able to find copies of it used on uh, on Amazon for Gary and I. I. I think that it was meant to be like they could reasonably think this was going to be a, a big hit because it had been a long time since an X-Men game. Like X-Men went away for the amount of time you want a property to go away when you like kind of get Midland. Right. So like in, in the PS2 era, like they had X-Men uh, 3 the game and and Wolf X-Men 2, X2 Wolverine, the game, which are all like fine games, but are kind of like C plus B minus games. Right, right. Um, yeah. And kind of underperformed, you know, so they were like, OK, let's 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 let the property breathe. And then came back in five years, you know, and, and people, you know, understandably, like, you know, we're probably pretty hungry for X-Men shit. You know? Yeah. So. So <laughs> they just delivered more shit than X-Men. <laughs> yeah, exa- exactly. I didn't want I didn't want like literally Colossus Levens. <laughs> I didn't want the ing- ingots that Colossus leaves behind when he's oh no, you know, <laughs> not choked out that, that sideways bar of it, yeah, poor poor shit. guy, uh, yeah. poor, poor poor Peter. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, did you uh, have you seen any cutscenes with him in this game? Absolutely not. No. It's, yeah, well, I am happy to have been meeting you. Like it's it's, it's really like, over the top, like, like straight up Ivan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's straight up Boris and Natasha kind of stuff. He was better voice acted in the 90s X-Men arcade game. <laughs> yeah. Or, or in like Deadpool or in the cartoon or like any other things. Like they, they make him. It's amazing that this game is written so poorly because like Mike Carey wrote Lucifer. Like Lucifer is super good. Mm-hmm. Like that's like, that's like a classic. Like that's a, you know, it's 
a really good comic. Yeah. So, and his X-Men run is fine. Like it's pretty interesting. Like it, there, there are parts where it is not, and there's some dodgy art, but like, it is a good run. So, I mean, the question is how much of what he wrote ended up in the game, yes. because there are clearly cut scenes, but these guys yeah. had to do all the recording, all the voice direction. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. Dennis Didak went in there and was like, he wouldn't say that. He should say something, you know, and then. No, he, he, he did. He caged it is what he is, what he did. He might have like, more like, Cajun yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just, yeah just, it's like, yep. David Cajun. <laughs> like, you will learn what it's like to be human, I guarantee <laughs> <laughs> Welcome down to south of Detroit, Cher. Yeah? <laughs> it's time to learn what the good character we guys built. <laughs> David Cajun is definitely a thing I'm going to steal. I'm going to just say yeah. that right now. It's like a good Twitter handle if anybody hasn't joined Twitter yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh, God. It's just uh, it's just quotes from David Cage games, but done in kind of like a Cajun patois, phonetically. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Just add share to the end of a couple David Cage quotes. You, uh, you, you, got, you got two souls up in that dog of share. <laughs> Don't you be worrying no more, Cher. We got a system of a, or fuck, not a system of a dead man, theory of a dead man. I know he's just confused. <laughs> putting all my jokes. <laughs> system uh, of a dead man. <laughs> well, I just lie here pretty much, and uh, then I, I hear some more. <laughs> Why um, is that Obama? Why yeah. is Obama the front man of System of a Dead Man? <laughs> he narrates the audiobook that's the explainer. Okay. Like it's Which the, one of those guys appeared places. at the end of a Call of Duty? Was that Theory of a Dead <laughs> the, Man? The uh I think I mean maybe. Like I think yeah. that's uh they did I mean they did uh in Fahrenheit at least, but I don't know Call of Duty. I think so though. <laughs> Oh, uh, theory of a dead man. Man, the- I, I I Googled for theory of, theory of a dead man, and it auto completed a venue near me. And I'm very curious if they're coming by. Oh I, no! Oh yes. <laughs> 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 like, cool. I think you have to. You have a responsibility. You go there and just yell like fair and height, fair and height. Like, <laughs> wait, a, wait, wait a minute. Um, Huh. No, currently don't have any tickets on sale. But they, ah. they, they come by Bogarts. The most recent time they were at Bogarts was on October 10th. So hmm. I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and write on a white T-shirt, Theory of a Dead Man, live at Bogarts. <laughs> and put it, wear it around town. <laughs> <laughs> like, Where, yo, I saw him at Bogies. It was awesome. Where's was Bogarts? Weird. Yeah, Just go to <laughs> Teespring. Someone's probably made three designs of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Before we even sure. released the episode, we got a mole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David. I, that I'm, site is my I'm favorite for official bootleg merchandise. Oh yeah, <laughs> Teespring, Redbubble, all those. I'm drinking coffee out of a David Cajun coffee cup right now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened quick. Oh man. Um. So a comment complaint about this game, and it's one that I feel very sympathetic to, um, is mm. that you don't get to play as any actual X Men. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's. I, I think it's a bummer, right? Like it was most pronounced during that during that Nightcrawler fight. You know, it's like, like okay, you can literally steal their genes and be them, but like get like a small buff to your mana regeneration by being. Mm. <laughs> Look, when I think Phoenix Force, I think casting faster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not not the whole destroying the universe and always coming back kind of thing. No. Oh, okay. Well, no, you respawn infinitely already. So oh, true. OK, we all have the Phoenix Force. Oh, that's a. That's a story. No, but I mean, it was the X the Phoenix now. Mike Carey wrote in that back door. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, the, the bigger thing that bothered me, like that does bother me, but I also was bothered by the fact that like the, the way that you're splicing different X-Men's genes on yourself is never like actually explained. No, no. Like, this game game straddles a weird line between like being faithful to the concepts of the source material and being like a Sega style arcade game with like huge graphics and combos and, little you know in world counters you walk through that tell you how many things you have left and like just being able to like splice on gene powers in a very arcadey kind of way yeah so you're gonna hate this there actually is a lore reason for the gene splicing oh, i want to hear and that it's it pays homage to the u-men from new x-men oh they, <laughs> i i knew the u-men were in this i guess that makes sense huh. yeah but it, it's weird that like the x-men do it though because the u-men do it it's like it's physical like the u-men literally do yeah, like lung transplants like morphing parts of a mutant onto themselves not doing yeah. gene therapy yeah so so wait they're just kind of like taking they, they pick up one of Iceman's hairs and like thread it in and they kind of tow me into being a Iceman. like what mm, it would be more that's like how you would it works steal... in this game and that's the... how yeah that's 
Yeah. In the comic, they would just cut up mutants and like sew the bits onto themselves. Like you, you would literally cut off Iceman's hands. Okay. And then cut off your own hands and and stitch on Iceman's hands, and then the idea huh. would be you'd have Iceman powers. Okay. Out of your hands. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the look pretty, pretty sick. Good. Yeah, the U-Men are great. Yeah. The um, yeah, Grant uh, Grant Morrison. Then they eventually become kind of crap. Like everything Grant Morrison did for the X Men, like gets co opted later to like lesser effect. Oh, true, true. Like, but, hey, what what if Zorn Morrison was an actual has kind character? Of become the lesser effect of himself. <laughs> Would you, one more time. Grant Morrison has kind of become the oh, lesser yeah. version of himself at this point, though. Look at his heavy metal work or any of his recent miniseries. Yeah, I'm not I'm not as into it. Like, I like them. Okay. The sci fi channel made his last miniseries better. Like, huh. Oh, I, I haven't watched Happy yet, but like comic Happy disappointed me good. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. On TV. Yeah. OK. The comic, I mean, the comic is fine, but it doesn't feel like that. You know, this is this is great. Like, I feel like up until the actors like, up actually until lifted up quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, you mentioned, so that was in Grant Morrison's run. I've read all of Grant Morrison's run. I feel like I would remember the U Men, but I, the, um, yeah. I, I, I feel, feel like, like you should remember them too. Issue yeah. arc. Okay. Okay. Six, eight, but they also turn out to be the main antagonist of the, you know, in the end, like yeah. the thing, like they come back, it gets all tied together. Like they're also the leader of the U Men is the drug that the kids are oh, inhaling. Johnny Sublime. Yeah. 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 That's, so that's the U Men guy. Okay. Yeah. I, for, I, for, I, I, I like the that. Johnny because I think it's just John in the comics, but I like that you call him Johnny because <laughs> plus this additional familiarity. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Sublime sounds like a dare mascot. <laughs> <You're really Yeah. laughs> do what Johnny Sublime does. Do not do what jokey Sublime does. <laughs> yeah. That's a worse lime, not a. Yeah, I I, I could have I could have sworn it was Johnny Sublime, but OK. Yeah, no, I believe you. I believe you. That's, That's a fine. pretty good name, too. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm you know, I'm being confrontational. We're just about making this. our own knockoff you. X-Men here. We got <laughs> David Cajun, Johnny Sublime. <laughs> Cyclop. The, uh... <laughs> a centaur horse. It's just one eye. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, just, he's just a singular unit of Cyclops. That, that's a Duck Stream joke, but that was a, a ultimate Cyclops who was like during the drawing thing, which was the the funniest thing that I thought happened during our Duck Stream. But I was like very tired. Yeah, I was very into ultimate Cyclops. Um, yeah, yeah. Something about that p that hard p ending. <laughs> Like plop. yeah, yeah. Like, plop. I mean, like it, it has to be possible to make a good X Men game where you don't play as one of the canonical X Men, right? Because like yes. as it, as it stands in the you know like in this point, I kind of felt like I was doing something kind of enjoyable, like uh, enjoy like oh I'm just I'm I'm solving a Picross while elsewhere in the same room somebody's fucking, and it's like <laughs> oh I, <laughs> I wish I wasn't. I mean like a Picross is fine. Um, yeah. I I would, I'd like to be the person who's fucking. Yeah. 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 But like, so you say you say yes, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I think well because the so the first like X Men Legends game like you play as Magma like a really unknown X Men, mm-hmm. so it gets a lot of the same kind of effect across, and like it doesn't feel bad, right. like it, it's it's fine, you know. Or you actually don't start; you start as Wolverine rescuing her. She okay. shows up, but she's your point of view character. You play as her for a large portion of the game. I feel like you can do that because like one, you need that point of view character. Like playing as an unknown actually helps a lot. Like if it's if you just started the game as Wolverine with the X-Men, like you wouldn't have anybody to, exp- you know, it'd, it'd feel clunky. The exposition would feel clunky. But what if Wolverine um, had amnesia? Well, the, <laughs> <that's>, um, <laughs> but the, the tutorial the main, level is Japan. <laughs> oh God. Like it just, yeah, <laughs> it's just like him, you know, just dead, dead girlfriends mm-hmm. and, and their fathers who are getting revenge on him. Uh, the uh, Madripoor years. The, the thing I would want is the thing that would make it cool uh, as a non X Men, is just having a lot of control over my guy. Yeah. Like, give me that, you know, DC Universe or like the like City of Heroes like interface to create my guy and just play as like a teen joining the X Men. Like, here the they give you the instead of making you a blank slate. Like, what it's the same thing I wanted for a long time, which is like the X Men Elder Scrolls or the X Men O four five one game. Mm-hmm. Like, in this one, they give you three different backstories, um, none of which are like super interesting. Like, which one did I chose? The one was the guy who was the former bigot because I was like, how are they gonna fucking do this one? Like, what are they going to do? And the answer is it's super stupid. <laughs> like, they don't. Like, it, it's really, yeah. really dumb. But who uh, who do you guys choose for, for your, your destiny? Uh, I, I did Amy. Mm-hmm. The, the, the I one was the young black boy because the DS one has less choice. OK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, we all played different, different. We chose different destinies. Um, In the trick to the guy who I played, the bigot was like his he's got like a phantom dad. Like his dad used to abuse him and then he hears his dad's voice all the time. 
So he, wow. so he's got a ghost dad. Um, and, and that's fine. You know, and like, I was like, okay, this is going to be a conflicted character. I bet this game with this reputation isn't going to pull it off. <laughs> and the way they deal with it is just by not. So like, he's still just like these, all the purifiers are his former teammates. Like he was essentially in the like Marvel universe version of the KKK. And, and then his to, powers awoken. And then his powers awoken and he just decides to kill the, it, it's like fucking Poe Dameron all over again. Like he just <laughs> decides to gleefully kill all of his former teammates without I, even I, pausing. I think, I think you mean Finn. It's Finn who does that. Oh, Finn. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I played as Amy, and her parents, like, sent her away to America just because Japan was worse about mutants, I think. Mm-hmm. And, like, it manifests, like, at one point, Kurt says, oh, I know your name because uh, I knew your dad. He was a good man. And she's like, How, what kind of good man would send his daughter away? I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, this, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't want you to end up in, like, a concentration camp. Yeah. Like, you know, and then what? Do, what is the football guy's story? Like, is he just like, he, like all the pictures just showed him like kind of happy to be there. He's he's your stereotypical jock dude written by a bunch of Canadian nerds. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like he walks right out of Degrassi. Okay, and like, so the DS one, you get a different character entirely. Okay, Who, and who's that? the DS one varies because it's kind of a generic open world city thing there's there's some level structure but your bottom screen is a map for the most part you explore around and the choice system actually works out there because every time you make a choice it changes some aspect of your powers Mm. Mm. so like one of the first ones is wolverine and Sabretooth find you in the aftermath of the big event exploding san francisco and Wolverine, you're, you're looking for your father figure. Wolverine's like, look, dude, help me save everyone. And, you know, your father figure will be in there. And Sabretooth just goes, what? Fuck this clown. You you just need to go find him right now. Blow everyone else off. Mm. And so you get a new power after this. But if you choose good guy, you get knocked down. And it's kind of like the stun if you choose Sabretooth, you suddenly evolve fire powers that have ah. blast damage. <laughs> you know, like Sabretooth. <laughs> yeah, like, well, that's like... the thing. They don't limit the choices. It's just good or evil. You're basically doing a kind of, do I want to be more damaged? Do I want to be more kindly with my powers? Gotcha. So it's almost exactly what it, um, Infamous did. Yeah, it's very Infamous-like. And... It's it's easily the best version of the game because there's only the one character, so the story is written consistently all the way through. Good. You're not fighting. When you do a fight, it's basically going to be because you sided with one person over another, so you get variable bosses hmm. instead hmm. of just, well, everyone has to fight Wolverine, even if you've been teaming up with the X-Men. Right. That sounds great. And the, the combat sucks, but it's a DS brawler. What do you expect? Right. <laughs> The, the combat sucks in all versions. Yeah. Right. That's a, that sounds much better. It's easily the best version, and I say that having tried them all now and regretting it. <laughs> so you say that. Uh, you also played the Wii version. You, you you had played the the 360 and PS3 one a while back. You also played the yeah, Wii version. Why? <laughs> well, because at the time, they had just announced this is going to be destroyed, so I went, I need a copy of this. Yeah. And... you. You also have to remember, I seek out the absolute worst things on those platforms. I've 100 percented Sonic 2006 with the very hard DLC bonus. Uh, uh, mm. Yeah. So that, that that game's not as bad as people tell you, by the way. <laughs> Just uh, the, the loading screens make it uh, make it. A thing, right? Oh, yeah. The loading screens are intolerable. But if it had like maybe two more months of tightening the code, it'd be a pretty solid game, if not the stupidest plot by a mile. Right, right. So so what's what's crazy about the about the Wii version of this? So the Wii version is the you know, the next gen from then version, except everything is poop textures. Like it looks like an N sixty four game. And and the like the next gen quote unquote version is not it's not a very pretty game by and large. No, but this thing looks like it came from the GameCube at best. Mm. Um, You don't have cutscenes. There's a couple of FMVs on the disc, but mostly they replace any in-engine cutscenes with very poorly drawn portraits talking at each other like a visual novel. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. 
So just all of a sudden the game will pause and you'll see these heads pop over things and you go, is that Emma Frost or am I the blonde chick? Oh, crap. <laughs> because the art is really bad. And it's it's no great shapes on the uh, PS3 version either. Like, right. everyone's got a pretty bad, like, case of, like, half dishonored face. <laughs> you know, like a lot of, like, kind of, like, broken jaw lines and, like, weird mm. bridges of noses and stuff. And, like, the, the general design, like... We talked about Nightcrawler earlier. Can we talk about his outfit for a second? Because I mean, he's gone. He's gone native for sure. <laughs> he really is like really. Look, like, if Charles Xavier dies, no one has any fashion on the team anymore. It's either got to be edgy uniforms or um, space twink, I guess, is what you would call like, Nightcrawler. <laughs> he's just that that hat. Like he's just got that like plain old like mechanics hat. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I think about like a lot of things with Nightcrawler and and just all the time. <laughs> and and, that, and that's not one of them. Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. No. This is weird, you know? And it doesn't match his, like, it's not like they rebrand his personality. Like, when you run into Gambit, they at least kind of change him for the, you know, they made him, like, this neutral guy who runs the, the, the bad part of town or whatever. It's not, uh, at least they, they made a full change in the character. Nightcrawler still acts like Nightcrawler. He's just dressed like, you know, I don't Hardy know. Boy. Yeah, yeah, like a party boy. Like he's 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 dressed like party boy. Like not the titular party boy, but the, <laughs> not, not one, cap, of the, not one of the one of the party capital squad. B, capital B no, party, boy. party boy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. A, a a singular unit of party boy. We don't want to get sued yeah. by party boy. <laughs> like party boy is he's gonna put on his litigious boy cap <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm litigious boy. <laughs> come here, lawyer boy. <laughs> I'm just imagining Nightcrawler teleporting around trying to catch the copies of this game and destroy them now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Leaving them in the Dark Force dimension or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the oh, yeah. He, realm. he brings the new guy for his shadow powers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. <sighs> and everyone, here's a, here's another thing that like doesn't pay lip service to the source material in any way that bothered me, is no matter what your powers are, they involve like hyper agility. Oh, yeah. Because you can do those dumb, like shitty God of War building jumps. Yeah. With every uh, character. So like, how does energy projection, how does that help me go <laughs> jump around like an idiot? I was thinking that too, because you're, you know, you're, you're playing as this hyper acrobatic person, uh, you know, with like these counters and stuff. And I'm jumping around because obviously you jump. Um, yeah, that is very incongruous. I think that they just put that in so they could force you to do like these, you know, trendy at the time mantling sections. Right. Yeah. Like I'm looking at the Wii Ugh, version and yes. like, the, this person is climbing up, climbing up these uh, ledges, like jumping up and down them um, as the ledges are disappearing on a TikTok kind of mm. thing. So it's like, oh, a time platforming section in this action RPG. Great. Yeah. Well, those like, hide loading. <laughs> That's how yeah, they yeah. go from one 3D area to the other is those one way platforming sections that only <laughs> get you over a pile of rubble. Oh, that's actually yeah. really smart. <laughs> other than the part where it plays like shit. Yeah. 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 Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I I also they didn't uh give Forge like a Native American voice actor. I don't like that either. Oh, like they, they, you know, they erased him. Yeah, like it's it's like pretty rare that you get like you know a Native American character in a game at all. Mm -hmm. And you know Native American superhero like it's not like there are tons of them. Mm -hmm. Like a bunch of them are in the X Men, but there aren't you know like just proportionally yeah. you know. But he just sounds like like you know guy whitey corn good. <laughs> You know, I don't want him to like be like, you know, the spirits are angry or whatever. I just right. want him to have an accent. Right. To, you know? <laughs> to, to, to present somewhat as, uh, yeah. as, as what the character is. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a big part of Forge, man. Like he battles a demon bear over the skies of Dallas. Like it's like, he's a, it's, it's the defining thing about him other than, you know, machine shit. Right. So, and he's not like a minor character. Like he shows up only a couple of times in the first couple hours, but I watched like most of a long play of this and like, he shows up quite a bit. Cause he's a great character for like a video game. Like he's very MacGuffin-y. Right. Right. You know, like he can True. just make the technology do whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cast it right. Yeah, man, this is really bad. Yeah. It it's is. It's a bummer. Pointing on every level you could think of and more. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it definitely had surprises. Like I said, I was expecting something a little bit better and then was surprised by how annoying it is. Like, <laughs> To, to, to give a sense for how much Gary was looking forward to this, like oh, God. I, I, I ordered this, you know, I ordered this off Amazon, ship it to Gary's house. I'm like, oh, it'll get here like January 1st to something or other. And you were like, I hope it gets here over the break so I can so I can beat it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm just like very hard up for X-Men. I've been replaying X-Men Legends 1. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, I just recently beat 
Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2, which are not X-Men games, but I tend to play with X-Men in those games. Right. Because I like those X-Men. Going to replay through X-Men Legends 2 on my PSP mm. after this. Like, I just, like, I'm in mm. an X-Men mood. Love them X-Men. Yeah. God damn it. The, I believe give, you. <laughs> give, give me give me the X-Men. <laughs> I um, mean, Eidos is, has the Avengers stuff, so we'll see if that turns into an Ultimate Alliance successor. But that would be. I'd I don't be, know where the hell the game licenses are for X-Men right now. I don't know Activision either. Activision just lost them again. <laughs> do you, do you guys, you guys are not, uh, or like Cole, I know you're, you like the X-Men, but you're not as big an X guy as I am. Are you, are you an X-Men guy, sir? I dabbled in and out and I have been off big two comics pretty much since the last debacle involving static. So it's been about five years now, I guess. I mean, yeah, I haven't, I haven't read any modern X-Men comics. It's all like childhood, but I, I, I keep so. track of it. Yeah. I, I remember the eighties and nineties runs, pretty crystal clear i did new x-men a little farther than that there was also the absolute dreck like the draco mm, oh man yeah draco hey Cole, i've been trying to think you of know about to... the time that they were going to turn nightcrawler into the antichrist so radical catholics could hold him up as the devil on earth <laughs> and then rapture people with communion wafers that disintegrated them <laughs> yep <laughs> what they they plan to they they they're the step one Install Nightcrawler as the Pope. Okay. Easy, right? Step two. I have, I have uh, vague recollections of that. Make his like image inducer thing fail at the precise moment that communion wafers that would disintegrate people <laughs> would fire to fake the rapture. Okay. To, to, to what end? Uh, to like undermine the church okay. to gain power. Like no, no, no good end. Chuck Austin end. Like <laughs> basically okay. Vatican one wanted to destroy Vatican two as best it could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a, uh, it's, it's man. Like, well, cause, cause so that happens. Well, um, why would Kirk that's go actually along called, that? isn't, isn't that storyline called a holy war war? I don't isn't the Draco, the one where he goes to hell with it, with his father. Right, Shit. The Draco yeah. is the one where you find out Satan has been screwing people to create mutants because that's yeah. how they'll get out of hell, <laughs> which yeah, he's already quick, doing yeah, to screw yeah, people yeah, to create yeah, mutants. Yeah. Why do- you, you just ruined the loop. I was going to, I love running that, that plot by people and, and <laughs> asking that they can spot, spot the, the plot hole in it. I'm sorry. It's, I'm so so sorry. Fucking, it's just no, it, it's so yeah. fucking dumb. Like Satan. So like Satan, the, the, who, who exists? Say, say, <laughs> essentially the Marvel Universe. Satan, not Mephisto. Okay. But like another another one of the Marvel Universe staples of Satan's. Okay. Um, has because been they like got for, a deep Satan bench. For, for, <laughs> it's like it's like it's many you, ankle deep. Okay. And has been like teleporting to Earth, like having sex with women, so they'll give birth to babies that look like Nightcrawler. Who have okay. the power to teleport because that's what happens with his demon seed. Okay, so and, th- th- that actually makes I, – I, I recall other Nightcrawlers somehow being made. I did not remember that A, Nightcrawler was Pope, or B, they were little Satans. There was a – yeah, there's a – like the Abyss is a, apparently a Nightcrawler baby as well. Huh. Um, and then so they can use all their powers to teleport Satan out so he can get out of hell. <laughs> it's it's so – and like actually if you read it, like it sounds kind of funny when you just like read the premise. If you actually read it, it is – mind-numbingly boring well, bullshit i'm sure it's intolerable because it probably like falls into the dogma trap right no i wish no. like it, it actually yeah, it's has not nothing even that good yeah, yeah. It, it's, 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 <laughs> it's it's the 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 current x-men lineup just kind of like pound around hell like fighting generic monsters and you know a lot of stuff with magic talking yeah. about demons which like i like magic I, that makes sense for her character but like boy those yeah. are bad comics <sighs> did you sir I, did you read the I romeo and juliet was, one Yes, the, that's exactly where I was going to go. We had Jesus to bring that up. Christ, like, <laughs> so, okay. So, so, so this is just cool. Like, imagine, imagine that gesture where somebody just like rests their chin on their on on their on the heels of their palms. Like, oh, like I'm just giving you one of those. Like, I'll oh, tell me more. Uh, <laughs> Explain Chuck off. You the want this deal. one since I ruined the last. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, so, so uh, uh, the Guthries, which are like Cannonball and Paige Guthrie, and stuff. They had another uh, brother who they who Chuck Austin introduced who has like angel wings again and has healing blood um, or just has wings. He has a healing voice, I think, because they think they gave <laughs> angel. <laughs> yeah, the blood. original angel has blood that can cure. Yes. It. Okay. Yeah. Well, cure, it, literally, um, which, yes. which is this all Chuck Austin shit. Um, they've been involved in a Hatfields and the McCoys style feud for a long time. Uh, he falls in love with the, you know, the, the opposing group and they do this long riff on Romeo and Juliet with like long stretches where they're quoting it. But the oh. Capulets in this have mute, homemade mutant-killing robots and suits of armor oh. uh, that they bring in. 
and it comes in at like a svelte like seven issues and an epilogue. So, um, so of, more more than a trade. It's a trade plus. Yeah, a trade. It's a trade. trade like yeah. a huge trade. Like, oh, good I... God. Like oh. he he also did like Avengers shit too. Like he, oh, he you went didn't, over and did... didn't share my favorite part of that Romeo and Juliet oh, I, adaptation. Yeah, it, it's been a, it's been quite a while. Yeah. So yeah, what what is the what is the part? Which I is the part where not Angel screws not Juliet in midair. And his parents are down below watching them fuck. That's, it, it does. And it's played for, like, serene beauty. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're As opposed being, to, like, like torturing oh, your parents. Oh, how adorable. And it's like, no, Nana is watching you bone. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they made me watch. They made me watch. <laughs> <laughs> I just think, think, think about sky boning and, like, so one of the things I think about flying is, like, getting all those bugs in your teeth. Uh-huh. Like, there's nothing that would bust my boner, like, getting a huge fucking locust in the eye. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think I can handle that. Like, hey, don't yuck yums, man. Some people are into, <laughs> into <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, <laughs> just imagine a cloud bugs. brushing your ass. And we, how do you react to that? <laughs> yeah, clouds are cold and heavy. Like, you don't need to have your ass misted. I mean, again, if you're into having your ass misted. Like, <laughs> I'm not you know, to... I feel like if you have your ass misted, you want to know it's coming, not <laughs> accidentally fly a little too high. and. <laughs> yeah, it's also, it's also even just the logistics of it, because, like, she can't fly. So he's like carrying her like you know you, you'll watch a pornography and they'll have a oh, that a, person has way too much power over that person in this situation <laughs> well, well not oh, just yeah. that but I, I always think of like the logistics like I, I recognize that it's theoretically possible to have sex with somebody while holding them up like holding them right you know like you'll see that sometimes like some you know some super buff dude will be but it seems like pretty varsity and this is like a shitty waif teen right doing that like where is this upper body strength coming from to just like literally support all of this adult human females weight while they sky fuck yes and again with all the attendant kind of like lo- lo- loss of concentration that comes from that yeah like at the moment he comes as he like they just both drop like stones like <laughs> like those birds that do that <laughs> yeah he just, he, he just uh, uh stops minding the throttle and then flies right into the jet of an oncoming plane <laughs> that's why the parents are he falls they're right into nana because they're yeah. beneath them <laughs> yeah that's why they're there they're just going to get out the net and, and it. so it's just it's 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 safe sex yeah. in, the, uh, in the Guthrie household. <laughs> There's a version of this with Cannonball where he just grabbed a woman and blasted her across the earth with it. <laughs> There's a re- version with Paige where like somebody ripped off all of her skin with his teeth. And the, the parents is. are always there just to make sure it's OK. Yeah, there is. And I'm just going to touch on this briefly because we're about to hit time. And this is so tangential. A subgenre where you can commission some actresses to do specific porn, but they are, they will get paid by lonely nerds to do accurate comic character with powers and everything scenarios. I believe it. Like a, like a clips clips for sale kind of thing. Insane things. If you can ever find them (laughs) like Scarlet witch versus Zatanna magic dueling lesbianism. (laughs) (laughs) Except someone has clearly written this out in ways where they're like, this is how these powers would interact. So, the, and there's just this $2 after effect CGI between the boning. <laughs> what a dream job. Yeah. <laughs> just... It's amazing that there's like, I've looked into the actual cost that these people make per this and holy crap, you could support yourself. I'm it, Yeah. It, it's always amazing what people will spend that kind of money on for 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 boner boner times like we this is this is too long of a conversation again too too late in this episode but we've like talked about that where like i have a sympathy for people who have a fetish that is impossible right you know and it's like if you I if make you have files for those people it's great <laughs> money for me but oh man do you hear some weird shit yeah I'm sure yeah yeah it's just you know whatever whatever the closest you know and, and that like they get closer to you know that's closer to them getting their fantasy than people, you know, other people have things that are more impossible. I feel like, right. Like you can at least like through CG make that a visual like approximation of it. Yeah. So I can but, make yeah, you feel cost. like you're getting bored. It works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cost 80 bucks. $80. You, you need to charge more, my friend. <laughs> I probably do, but this is the side gig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the gig I can talk about on a podcast. The other one I have NDAs. <laughs> That's, oh man! Uh, well, Dennis Dyack, we await your response. <laughs> um, yeah, like, to all of it, we, we, we uh, will meet at an agreed upon neutral location. 
Yep, in order to debate. <laughs> We're all Sir, just going to go to a Tim Hortons and get shanked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah, don't you don't want to go to Tim Hortons anymore? That guy's that guy's an asshole. What? Like they just, uh, yeah, they just did a whole thing about like this big whiny letter raise about the raised minimum wage. Oh, uh, he, he thing. Pulled and, a like, just, like, basically a Canadian Papa John. Okay, yeah, like yeah, he's he's a shithead, and and they just cut like tons and tons of very elemental ba- like benefits mm-hmm. for people in the waste. Like it is a big crybaby move because of this raise to minimum wage of fourteen dollars or oh. fourteen dollars. That sucks. I really so, enjoy their coffee. Well. You're going to have to. I mean, good go literally anywhere else that serves coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like inconvenienced by it. That's just a, huh, well. Yeah. You have to do an espionage to get their secret recipe. <laughs> and then it's you can 7 Eleven make... blend with a little bit of sugar in it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the secret ingredient is sugar. <laughs> that's what makes this sweet. Yeah, um, and that's what makes it spa peggy and meatballs. Uh, Sir, thank you for uh, joining us. And thank you for suggesting this in your support. We yes. really appreciate that. Hey, I do my damnedest, and uh, sometimes I damn us all. Yeah. You, you have you have damned us all. It was a good damning. I'm glad that I can cross this off the list, and now I now I know. <laughs> hey, Gary, can you lock that door that's behind you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Blanket okay. party time. Hey, sir, you've really hurt us a lot with all these games you put in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Blanket unlock party. the door. It's I, fine. I okay. sincerely <laughs> had to figure something when I was suggesting for this, like. What can I do that is not horrendous? <laughs> well, and just wasn't going to get like sidetrack us into like a, a philosophical discussion about like the merits of youth and yeah, and, yeah and, I, I you don't know. intend for those things to happen. I, I think, just... oh man, this game is completely bonkers. But then I realize, <laughs> oh, I've spent. Uh, let me see what my Steam clock says here. Um, it's gonna be too much, guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> 26 hours on gender bender DNA twister extreme. Yeah. So it's like, Oh yeah, I've seen a lot more of that than you guys. Did. <laughs> I'm sure. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we, we really appreciate it. And it's, it's been, it's been good to have you on. Yeah. Where, where can people find you online? If, uh, if they are interested in following your, your adventures, you mentioned that you were going to do a licensed game, uh, project of some kind. So by the time this episode comes out, if we're assuming at least a week out, uh, the website hellscaper.com should be up and running, which is going Ooh. to be a repository for a lot of projects I've been working on for mm. about a year. Awesome. Yeah, everybody everybody look forward to that. Uh, if you ever wanted to hear much more depth on bad, obscure, terrible, or just weird games than you are ever going to get here and in written form, I'm your guy. Forbes mm-hmm. Corporate Warrior coming soon. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the Forbes FPS from the nineties. Oh, Jesus Christ! Have you done um, Left Behind Tribulation Forces? I have played all three Left Behind games. Okay, good. <laughs> I figured, I figured you have. I've only played Tribulation Forces, and that, that I, I have to say that one's my favorite. I... <laughs> oh, you mean the RTS series where they bake in uh, bad gender norms uh, yeah. into the mechanics? And, and the, the, the evil of what they bake in. <laughs> yeah, evil side trains their units at colleges and also can't Musicians. win. <laughs> Musicians yeah. are literally the devil's tool. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Damn art in college. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Check that. Go, check out uh, hellscraper dot uh, scraper or scaper. Scaper. Sorry. Scaper. Hellscaper dot yes. and then was it dot. What's your what's your Just extension? Com. Dot com. Hellscaper dot com. com. Check that out. I got the dot com. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's I had a, to jump on that when I saw that URL. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a, it's definitely a good one. It's easy to uh, it'll it'll stick out. Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Um, if you uh, if you like this show, if you want to uh, support us and possibly guest on an episode um, and dictate an episode, you can find out information about all that stuff at patreoncom slash TV. Yeah, um, leave us a rating or review. We really appreciate it when people do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you uh, if you join us on Patreon, you can join our Slack channel and talk to Zerg. Yeah, hello, um, as well as us, but also Zerg. Yeah, <laughs> just just um, before we recorded, there was a lively conversation that Zerg was involved in about the Sailor Moon games. Yeah, so that's it's a, true. Little, They're little... all good, but the RPG. <laughs> I, I that actually comports with my experience pretty well because yeah. my, my friend Derek and I were big Sailor Moon people and uh, played a lot of those. The fighting Including, games are great, and the strange puzzle game is actually really cool. It's like a bizarre magical drop. And the Doom Wad, where you use Luna as a chainsaw, is Chef Fingers. Um, <laughs> oh, man. The, uh, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm getting a link to that real quick. <laughs> good shit. 
Um, so uh, until until next time, um, the X Men don't have a dog. Who is Lockjaw? Who is Lockjaw? There we go. Now, yeah, with the new Marvel, where they're fucking wrapping the Inhumans into the X Men, they're already canceled. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. They they tried. They, they tried. tried with a budget of ten dollars and a week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the, but they got uh, they got Ramsey Bolton. Yeah, I guess he's not doing it. Anymore.